It's time. Who's getting one of these in the mail? We're going to find out. They're inside these envelopes. Stay tuned and don't forget to play with us at BeatTheBallers.com. Foot Clan, we know that you're champs out there, and we know that you got to celebrate in style. So head over to FantasyChamps.com for all the hardware bling that you need. You need that ring. You need that trophy. Well, I don't what? want to pay for that ring, Mike. You don't want to pay for a ring? No, no, no. I'm not interested in paying for the ring. Well, but they're, they're so no, sweet. Do I have a deal for you? <laughs> you Tell head, me. Over, head over to FantasyChamps.com. You add your choice of trophy or belt, and then you put a ring in the cart. Okay, okay. Then you click the little promo code thing, and you put in free ring, and guess what? I have no idea. You put a ring on it. That ring is now free. Okay, that makes sense. 59 bucks. The $59 ring reduced to $0 just like that. Make sure you add the trophy or the belt into the cart. Victory never felt so good at FantasyChamps.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Happy New Year. It's going to be the best year ever. Going to be the best year of my life. Thursday, 2020. January 2nd. And it's footy award time on today's episode. <sighs> my mm. body is ready. Smells like victory. Uh, approximately 40 million of you voted out there. Give or take 40 million. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the winners on today's episode. I'm excited. Uh, Judge Giamatti himself, with a little help, I think, from Jason, has chosen to put all of the winners in very Ooh. flashy envelopes. Signs, I mean, these are shield what, did, what did this delivered? cost me, Brooks? You don't want to know. Oh, my gosh. $20 an envelope. So we have the official winners, the 2019 Footy Awards. That's on today's show. What else is going on? We've got a new playoff contest we're going to talk about momentarily. Yeah, everybody wants to know, what are we doing this year? It's playoff time. Fantasy football is still alive. We have a super exciting uh, new game we're playing. I'm, I'm we'll see if you can about it. beat us. Oh, they can't. It's impossible. And I guess we're going to go over our Super Bowl picks today as well. That's right. Should we do, should we do that right now? Is that what we're, what yes. we're up to? Um, by the way, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, the community. A bonus episode every week Bonus at jointhefoot.com as well as Foot Clan League. So if you're starting new, uh, you want to get into a dynasty, a keeper league, uh, a new league with people that don't suck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people, oh, yeah. I, oh, they some suck. people suck. Yeah, big time. But some don't. I, put a, <laughs> I put a tweet out uh, a couple days ago. I was talking about. Uh, you know, the, my our dynasty friends, our our friends out there who are, they're already in it. I mean, these people are ridiculous when they're they're scouting starts because we we start scouting the new incoming rookies in the next couple of weeks or so. But I I put a post how the dynasty community they they're super excited for 2020. So now I'm real excited to dive in and look at these guys and the the dynasty thirst that started dripping into my timeline was unbelievable. Well, and let's be honest, Mike, you're just a little bit more interested than us at this exact moment in time because you have 47 dynasty picks. I, I did add that part. Yeah. yeah. And and here's the thing, too, is like we have, uh, we've got a friend, Nick, who has yes. a very good dynasty team, but he is retiring from fantasy football. Yes, so long, Nick. And so, you know, you might be in a league where one or two people either chose to retire or... Or you force them to retire because you're a smart commissioner. You put them down. You put them down. Took them out back. Yeah, and so you're looking for another, uh, you know, qualified, <laughs> committed owner for a team, and you can find those. We got foot, FootClanLeagues.com. Mm -hmm. If you're a member of the Join the Foot community, Super Bowl pick wise, we've got the Bills playing the Texans this week. The Titans are at New England. Uh, the Vikings are playing the Saints, and the Seahawks are in Philadelphia. Now, we each filled out a bracket, and we do this every year. I guess just to say words into the microphone and then brag about it fun. if you win. If you don't fill out a bracket, man, you're not living. 
This is playoff time. Let me ask this. Uh, Brooks, Al, did you guys fill out brackets? No, sir. Oh, You're not living. So, no, nope, Brooks doesn't like fun. Al Borland? I did not fill out a formal bracket, but I do have my picks. Sure you do. I, I'm guessing I they're exa- to you yesterday. I guess they're... Uh, Green Bay. It's the Packers Green against Bay. the Packers. I just figured it was whoever wins each week was in his mental head bracket. <laughs> I'll put them on paper as okay. soon as we're done here. So, uh, we'll walk through this a little bit. Do we just want to go round by round? Is sure, that what we're sure. doing? Let's do it. So, uh, we all have... Buffalo winning against Houston. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Sorry, Houston fans. We all yeah. have Buffalo winning that game. Um, I have New England over Tennessee. Do we, either of you have Tennessee winning that game? I have Tennessee winning that game. Okay. Yes, I and I am also taking the blindfold approach and saying Tennessee will win that, it, that match. It felt bad. I mean, I you know, look, the beginning of the end for the Patriots results in a Super Bowl because that's what they do. And knowing that that somehow they'll be in the Super Bowl. It was very hard to pick Tennessee, but when I look at this game... <laughs> it's very hard for me to see New England losing in New England, even though they've struggled. That's the part that I have a hard time with. I just don't know how they're going to score at this point. Th- that, that's the hard, t- the hard part, is looking at that, but then Jason and I are also talking about how does New England possibly win this game? Well, I, I don't know if, if uh, Tennessee will be able to score. That'll be the interesting part of it. Can they put it together against uh, that defense? Maybe. You know, Ryan Fitzpatrick did. Um, all right, are we going to stay in the AFC? Do you want to march through the AFC here? Sure, yeah. yeah, we'll complete it. So then, uh, based on my finishes, I have Buffalo traveling to Baltimore, Baltimore winning that game. And we have the Titans going to Baltimore and Baltimore winning that I game. I have Baltimore winning that game, yeah. That means uh, for, for my other side, it's Kansas City uh, versus New England. That game's at home in Arrowhead for Kansas City. And I'm taking the Chiefs to get through New England finally. And so that puts Baltimore, Kansas City in the AFC title. I have, I have Kansas City against Baltimore as well. So that means we've got different ways of getting to the same end result, which is Baltimore, Kansas City, AFC it's, championship It's game. the matchup we all deserve. And NFL, don't I, let us down. I can't wait. That game's going to be yes. outstanding. And I ended up taking Kansas City. That's a tough pick, but I got Kansas City as the AFC representative. Jason? As, as do I. Okay. And I have Baltimore. All right. Well, that... The nice thing about both of those teams getting to the AFC title game, if it happens, I'm really rooting for both of those teams. I, l- yeah. I would love to see Andy Reid and Harbaugh get to the Super Bowl, so I'm happy there. On the other side, the NFC, um, I have Philadelphia at home beating Seattle. Obviously, Philadelphia will win the Super Bowl. Right. That's because what I like was told. I said it in the offseason, but my bracket may provide an alternate <laughs> reality for you when we get to that point. But I got Philly. Jason, you have Seattle? I do have Seattle going on the road and coming out victorious against the very injured Eagles. Yeah, I've took Seattle as well and this is I mean this is a, this is gross. I've I've taken three roads road You're teams. reflecting on your bracket now. Yeah, you're, my you're bracket is back bad. And, <laughs> 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 so then in the New Orleans Minnesota game, uh, I did take New Orleans to win that one which would put them up against Green Bay in the as, next. As did I. Yes, that okay. one's unanimous. So that means we all have Green Bay and New Orleans. Can we just yeah. pause for a second and talk about, like, okay, the Baltimore Ravens-Kansas City game, that's going to be unbelievable. Right. But that might not happen. The New Orleans-Minnesota game right. is happening this weekend, and that is a rematch of the Minneapolis miracle last year. It's in Minnesota. I want the game no, to be. No, this one is in New Orleans. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's in New Orleans. But I want this game to come down to like just a Hail Mary situation from the 50. Um, so Green Bay, New Orleans. I'm going to take New Orleans in that one. New Orleans. New Orleans across the Although, board. Man, I've been warming, warming to Green Bay in recent days. Yeah, I, I have. It's not. hard to beat Green Bay, you know, uh, in Green Bay. It's difficult to look at that team and you say, well, they're not flashy. They don't do anything special. How are they 13 and 3? Yeah, that the but you still is, are in the playoffs with Aaron Rodgers. Like the Aaron Rodgers sit philosophy for fantasy is great because you're looking at total fantasy points. But if Aaron Rodgers makes five Aaron Rodgers plays, that is very very valuable in the playoffs. The identity of the Green Bay Packers it's it's not the team that fantasy wants them to be. It's the Darius Smith. Well, is I, that? Mean, I mean, Aaron Jones has been <laughs> sensational, but but Aaron Rodgers has not been the fantasy quarterback that you had hoped for. So it. It feels like from the fantasy side of things, 
that skews how we believe mm-hmm. in the Packers. But they won 13 games. Well, they, like, they managed to do that. It's funny. You 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 talk about you look at your bracket and you hate it already for some reason. Um, this game, I have three this <laughs> game is one where I didn't think about it v- for long at all because I think the Saints are. I mean, I've. You know, I, they were my preseason Super Bowl uh, champion pick, and they've been outstanding. I'm changing on the fly, but oh! the fa- I, and I don't blame you here because I'm going Green Bay. The fact that this game is in Lambeau, uh, you know, Drew Brees is not the outdoor cold he's weather. Not, he's not an outdoorsy type. <laughs> you know, he's he, Drew Brees better start growing a beard that's right now. Be a, it's yeah, it's gonna. Oh be, man, I can't picture that. Oh man, that'd be weird. Yeah, I don't know why. I feel like maybe he's never I don't had know facial grow, hair before. I don't think he can grow a beard. No. Mm. No, that's going to be a problem. All right, so I am switching. I'm taking Green Bay over New Orleans. Wow. All right. And then uh, – so that puts – and you guys are both taking New Orleans to yes. beat Green Bay. Yeah. And then uh, I have Philadelphia versus San Francisco in round two at the top of this bracket. I'm going to take San Francisco over Philadelphia in my alternate universe where Philly somehow doesn't win the Super Bowl. I got San Francisco beating Seattle. And I have Seattle beating San Francisco on the road in a rematch of last week's game. Can I ask you a question, Jason? You sure can. Was it difficult for you not to be able to select an Eli Manning led team in this bracket? Like you don't oh, have the man. you don't have the option to choose the Giants. Is that it was, was that troubling? It was it was tough. It was troubling, but uh, Seattle came through for me. Okay, that means. Uh, my NFC title game is San Francisco Green Bay. I've got San Francisco in the Super Bowl. I have Seattle against New Orleans. New Orleans victorious at home going to the Super Bowl. I got 49ers Saints, and I got the Saints moving on. All right, that means my Super Bowl is Kansas City, San Francisco, and I'm going with the 49ers winning the Super Bowl. Ho hum, efficient, great defense, and that ho- that seed. That number one seed at home with that defense, I think they're just going to meander their way there, and we'll have to stare at Jimmy G's handsome mug all off season. I have Kansas City and the New Orleans Saints in what should be a shootout awesome Super Bowl. I have the Saints. Three to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I have the Saints victorious as Super Bowl champs. I'm sticking with my preseason picks here. And I got Baltimore versus New Orleans in the big game, and I have Baltimore and Lamar Jackson taking it home. I th- now that I'm thinking, we're, we're talking through all the, the things that could happen. Yeah. The Patriots versus San Francisco would also be pretty sweet. Oh, if we had, Jimmy G. If we had the, the, the Padawan versus oh, you're the saying, Master. Let's find the narrative that, that's most exciting. Yeah. That one would be pretty, pretty special, and we all know what would happen. Tom Brady would use blood magic to win. <laughs> like that, he would do whatever dark sorcery is necessary. Yeah, handsome Jimmy G game. would walk out at halftime and his hair had all fallen out. Yeah, like he for would sure. be completely bald. He's an no old man. No longer handsome. Now. Yep. Well, there, <laughs> that's not how I expected that to turn. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Is that the diet program that Brady has? Is that the... Um, blood magic? Is it blood magic yes. oriented? Yeah. yeah, he just drinks the blood of young men, young athletes. That's, <laughs> okay, is- That's, that got weird. Uh, Raiders coach John Gruden said Darren Waller underwent thumb surgery. So, you Maybe know... he meant uh, flipper surgery. Uh, that's what he meant. And look, it's a good thing when it happens now. I never understand some of these situations where, you know, he needs off-season surgery... It's going to happen April 25th. Like, do they not understand the correlation between recovery well, time and being back at camp, or are I, they trying to avoid camp? I get it from the the standpoint of, of laziness. Like, <laughs> you, you, you're a pro athlete. You want to play know, football. But you, you don't want to book a doctor appointment. You got to call them. Oh, okay. I, I give, is that what it, that's all it is? I, it's just dude, like, that's what it would be like, for me. I don't want to wait on hold. I give far more credit to the players and doctors here. I believe that when they wait till April, it's because they should. And it's like, well, you should wait for something to happen and heal and swelling to go down or whatnot. If it's truly... If it's truly like you can get the surgery whenever you want, it's like, well, I'm going to Aruba, <laughs> so I'm going to wait a couple months, then that's awful. Well, I don't give any credit to Philadelphia's medical team for making Deshaun Jackson wait 
94 weeks to mm. get his surgery. He'd be back already, and then I'd be right on my Super Bowl run. All right, Anthony Miller has oh. to undergo surgery yet again on the same shoulder he had offseason surgery for last year in January of last year. It slowed him down on the way back, and we saw what he could be. So you hope that this is a cleanup or something less severe, and he's able to start the year the way he finished the year because he's a very talented guy, should be the number two across from Allen Robinson for years to come. But surgery I, stinks. I don't remember because I'm a dumb man. Mm. Um, mm. Can either of you remind me, or maybe the producers, if it was uh, Anthony Miller, was he around in training camp and preseason? Was he... I, I feel like he missed Ooh, time I don't remember. There. I feel like yeah, he, he missed time Yeah, he did as well. miss some time. I thought he uh, was that for a different missed injury? some extra time with a different injury when he had returned. Yeah, That's what I'm, I thought happened. I'm but. just curious how this timeline is going to look versus last year because he definitely got off to a horrifically slow start. Yeah, he actually missed time, too. It's concerning. Yeah, and then uh, what is this? The Colts have signed Moelle Cox yes! and Zach Pascal to one-year extensions. Gigantor lives. What do you have, eight catches on the year, Mike? Eight amazing catches, thank you. A giant can only catch so many passes. Ron it, would, it would be cheating. If they threw to Mo Alley Cox every play. Are they slow playing it? They No, I'm saying if they did this, the NFL would be in an uproar because it would just be cheating. Because the Colts would win every game. This is my Yao Ming strategy. <laughs> yes. Someday it's going to be implemented, and I swear it would work. Don't you think that they might have wanted to attempt to cheat on their way to losing most of the second half of the season? No. Okay. They, you There's, don't want to... I would have. <laughs> I would have had the whole Monstars team in there helping me out. Ron Rivera, Riverboat Ron, head coach Okey of dokey. the Washington Redskins, a five-year deal. This is an, uh, a new chapter for Washington. You know, f Redskins fans have had to deal with e unpleasant life yes. for quite some time. Now, we know it out here as uh, Phoenix Suns fans, but if you are, you know, the Joe Dolan Knicks, you know this too. Look, at, at the end of the day, the ownership defines a lot of how you spend that money. So whether it's Bruce Allen or you know Jay Gruden or whomever it is, Ron Rivera, hopefully they can make some better decisions. They give some more control to the incoming GM. But Ron Rivera is a good coach, and uh, there's some talk of Jack Del Rio potentially oh. being the defensive coordinator on this team. Oh, Black Jack and Riverboat Ron together at last. That would be... I mean, every fourth down, they're going for it. They you, better. You can always play blackjack on the riverboat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and make, make sure you're sticking with us all off season. We will have a full coaching changes recap episode coming up in the in the next couple weeks. I don't When is this, Brooks? I think that's... Next couple months. Yeah. Couple yeah. months. Yeah. yeah. And breaking down their tendencies. It could happen is, any minute, though. So what does keep it mean? listening. That, you're, you're correct. Yeah. Uh, Doug Marone's coming back. In yeah, Jacksonville, wait, what? so weird for the 2020 season. Why? It seems strange. Is it because they were so bad? Yeah, I mean, no, that was all Tom Coughlin's the fault. The expectations here was definitely playoffs. I think it, around Jacksonville was Super Bowl, right? Because you had this team that has this great defense, and you signed the only piece you needed was that quarterback. You go out and sign Nick Foles, and then everything falls apart. The defense is beyond atrocious. And they're well. And maybe they that's just, why. I mean, Doug Marone is going to get them turned around, Jay. Yeah, and they kept they kept their GM as well. So they the only guy that changed here is Tom Coughlin. A couple weeks ago was let go. Um, it's All not, right, it's not inspiring. Chan Gailey is the new offensive coordinator for the Dolphins. Chan yeah. Gailey is aged, but it's bizarre. I mean, the fact that Chad O'Shea was let go was a strange move to me. I mean, you knew what. You were doing. Miami is trusting the process. They're purposely tanking. They purposely shipped off everybody, uh, like as many pieces of, from that offense as they possibly could. What was Chad O'Shea going to do with Kalen Balaj or yeah, exactly? You know, and, and I'll he, tell you what Samaj he did. AP He's run. overproduced. Yes, he outperformed expectations for sure and uh, got fired for his but troubles. The the one interesting thing is Chan Gailey is coming back to the NFL, and he had previously coached Ryan Fitzpatrick for several years. So Multiple times because he, yeah. he was with him in Buffalo, and then he was the OC up in New York when Ryan Fitzpatrick was dominating people, at least fantasy purpose-wise, with, uh, with Eric Decker and Brandon Marshall. All right, let's talk about what we're doing for the playoffs. 
Beat the Ballers, presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right, we're super excited about this. Fantasy doesn't have to end. It's not ending for us because we've got a very fun, exciting competition. That's Beat the Ballers. You can go to beattheballers.com and participate with us. And, uh, look, let's break this down. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can sign up. You can compete directly with Mike, with Jason, with myself. And there's some pretty sweet rewards if you beat each of us um, on every week of the NFL playoffs. Yep. And so what we've got is if you go to beattheballers.com, now each of us on today's show, we have selected one of the wild card matchups. And then from that matchup, we're choosing three players. Mm-hmm. And it's as simple as total fantasy points. I No quarterbacks, but you're choosing three players, most fantasy points that they can score, and you're going to go to beattheballers.com. You're going to enter, and if you beat one of us, like you make your own three picks, you pick three different players, you pick two of the same, one different, whatever the case may be. And then, I don't know, like you beat Jason's Yeah, picks. hypothetically. It's impossible. Hypothetically, you beat Jason, and basically – your reward is you get another, you get a free uh, entry to another game. If you beat two of us this playoff weekend, you get a free ten dollar game entry, and you get an entry to the very mm. special mm-hmm. Ballers, the Ballers Bowl. Ballers Bowl, and that is a ten thousand dollar prize package, and uh, you'll get an entry that'll be for Super Bowl weekend. And then if you beat all three of us on any given week during the playoffs. You instantly win a share of a $2,500 prize pool, and you get two entries to that Ballers Bowl. You yeah. see how that works? It's it's going to be fun. And the, the thing is, you know, we we, we sought out a, a relationship here with Monkey Knife Fight because their their game, if, you, if you're not familiar with Monkey Knife Fight, it is a blast. You it are is, now. It is so fun to play, um, and, uh, you know, we know that the Foot Clan is going to love this, and I would highly recommend picking three players in Mike's game and in Andy's game so that you have the best odds of winning. Yeah, not yours, huh? That's right. I'm, I'm unbeatable. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But beattheballers.com, it's simple. You just go to beattheballers.com, sign up, and then uh, enter the matchups. I'm going to be picking from the Philadelphia-Seattle game. And my three players, amongst all the options, I'm going to go with Hot Lockett. Okay. I'm going okay. with Tyler Lockett. He's been a little frozen in the center yes, as of but, late. But the Philadelphia secondary is beatable. Yes. Un- unlike Jason. Right. So I'm going to go Tyler Lockett, and then I'm going to go, I'm going to take a little interesting approach here. I got word you got word that Miles Sanders is going to be okay for this game. But I'm going Miles Sanders and Boston Scott. The double up. I'm going double running backs, Philadelphia at home. Tyler Lockett, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott. Those are my three. So if you end up picking three players from that matchup, those are the three you've got to beat. So you might go Metcalf or Goddard or Ertz I would have gone Goddard. Or Lynch or Homer. No, I know. You're really a big Dallas Goddard fan this week, and I don't blame you. But I'm going Lockett, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott. See if you can this, take me down. This is a tough game. Like this game specifically, I did not want to choose. No, I, w- I didn't have fun trying to decide to wade through the injuries. Because trying to get the right. Goddard and log out, man. I, yeah, I mean. Dude, it's Seattle. DK Metcalf. It's Seattle. It's like if your matchup was against the Cardinals and you didn't pick the opposing tight end. Yeah, but, you know. All right. Yeah. Hey, you can, maybe, you, maybe we'll see if people could beat you. Yeah. Jason, We're going to keep track seems... of what percentage of people beat yes, each of yeah. us, by the way. And, uh. Then we'll then we'll know who's actually the best. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll find out what we already know soon, which is my unbeatable team. I am uh, picking the Buffalo Texans game. Uh, and in I this, think you took the hardest draw. So you think so? Kudos to you. Yeah. All right. So here's why I. I so Hopkins is in, okay. right? Like I, I think everybody out there is like okay. So now we just got to pick two, right? Everyone's got Hopkins penciled in. So now it's like, who are the other two guys? And there's a lot of guys you could choose from. The next one that I locked in for sure was Devin Singletary. I, I'm a big believer in the talent. Uh, I personally have the the Bills winning this game. 
So if that's the case, game script could be good. So those are my two. And then that third one was really hard because you have the pass catching options, John Brown and Cole Beasley. Look, if you if you're playing upside here and you just want to win, Will Fuller, if he's active, is an auto win, and same with Kenny Stills. So I'm like, which way do I go? But I went safe, which is kind of my MO. I'm going Carlos Hyde. Old, reliable, a little boring. Yep. So I don't think I've got the ceiling here. Like I don't I don't necessarily think that I'm actually unbeatable, but it's hard to pick Fuller or Stills from my point because I'm trying you know what I mean? I'm trying to put out a reliable roster. All right. So I'm going Carlos Hyde, Hopkins, and Devin Singletary as my three so stars. You, in this you, game. you locked Hopkins in, but you know there were a handful of games this year where where the Stills or the Fullers of the world were the you know the the premium option on any given week over Hopkins. So I, I could see some lineups being built around those guys and taking the chance that Hopkins has a a less than game, and then then you win for sure against all the Hopkins opponents. So you're going Singletary, Hopkins, Hyde. Mike, you're choosing from the Saints-Vikings game. I am, but I, I, did you guys hear this news about Carlos Hyde? That he has expressed interest that he would like to return to the <laughs> Texans? <laughs> I don't doubt it. He's, he's Has been... he gotten to the point now where he gets like to choose things? I mean, that, that was I, not where he, he was. No, but he was pretty good this he year. He was, I know. I, it's just very... Funny to me. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm picking from the Vikings Saints matchup. I'm going with Michael Thomas, of course. Michael Thomas, you you must go with that. Never heard of him. Yeah, but it, okay. Similar to Hopkins, I feel like you, I'm I'm locking that chalk in. Then I'm going with Alvin Kamara, the resurging touchdown machine. The the positive regression has been occurring in a, uh, a matter that is probably not sustainable, but. Uh, I I like the Saints to win this matchup, so I'm going to take the the home running back, and then this is where I'm going to pivot. I feel like Stephon Diggs is kind of the easy. If if I would just went completely chalk to me, those would be my three picks because the 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 Saints secondary can be beat. They can give up points to fancy wide receivers, but I'm going to pivot. I'm going to go with Adam Thielen. He did absolutely nothing for the, in the box score, but he was on the field. So uh, this is. Just kind of uh, trying to zig when people are going to zag and put well, yeah. Stephon Diggs in. Uh, I would think that the chalk is having Dalvin Cook in the line. Yeah, that's the one that I'm, I'm shocked. Con I'm concerned about him, man. Uh, I think how, how much time yeah. he'll get out there. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, how healthy is he? The Saints' run defense is stout, but so I think I'm, a lot I'm, of I'm people out there are going. I am not worried about Dalvin Cook, and he will be in my lineup. I yeah, would be feel free. Yeah. So we're we're very excited about this. See if you can knock all three of us off. If you do, you're going to get your share of a $2,500 prize pool this week and two entries into the Ballers Bowl. You can learn more at beattheballers.com. It's super easy, super fun. And there's going to be a um, there's going to be a Ballers leaderboard up there at beattheballers.com too. So we'll see uh, all the involvement should be a lot of fun. Go go beat us, Foot Clan. Yeah. If you can, if you dare. All right, who's ready for the Footy Award oh, winner? Yeah. Are we ready? Old. I think we're ready for this Get the song. Music. You voted, and here they are. I can't handle Jason's dance right now. It's pretty impressive. Oh, there's some shimmy and some shaking. The 2019 Footy Award winners. As selected by the Foot Clan. Oh, what a year it's been. A year of highs and lows. Let's see who won. We are going to kick this thing off with the performance of the year Ooh. footy. Which single week performance was the most impressive on the year? Nominees were Drew Brees. Jameis, uh, that was from week 14. Do you, do you want me to go through all of these just stat read the, lines? No, just read okay. the names. It was Drew Brees in week 14, Jameis Winston in week 14, Lamar Jackson in week 15, Saquon Barkley, hello, welcome back, week 16. Uh, by the way, I'm just so, side note, I'm so happy Saquon showed Saquon stuff at the end of this year. Yeah. Because it really, it, it didn't make any sense, the injury, things like that. Now he can be drafted appropriately. Kenyon Drake in week 15, savior of many a fantasy team. 
and the old Sammy Watkins week one. Come on, Sammy. The winner of the performance of the year. Which single week performance was the most impressive? Lamar Jackson yeah, yeah. in week 15. Lamar, your footy is in the mail. But here's the thing. It was 25% of the vote. The runner-up was Drew Brees in week 14. Really? That's what I voted for. 20% of the vote. So Drew Brees coming through for fantasy owners in the playoffs, something he's not always done. And that's a pretty tight victory there. Lamar Jackson, week 15. Congratulations. Um, no I'm one sure expected Lamar Jackson to win an award, did they? I am sure this will be the only category Lamar Jackson <laughs> More wins. More than likely. Tonight. All right, that is it for uh, the performance of the year. The next award, the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year. Which player's painful injury hurt fantasy owners the most? Last year's winner was Leonard Fournette. Don't be carrying on. This year, the nominees for this very prestigious award are James Conner, Carry On nope. Johnson, nope. Adam Thielen, and Damian Williams. I feel personally triggered and attacked by this list, but... Let's find out who the winner is. Your winner for Not Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year is James Conner. Oh, <laughs> James Conner. Yes. Yeah, he probably deserved it. It is. He did deserve it because he, he just kept hurting you over and over and over and over. He'd get back and be like, psych. Why did he? What was the? It was James Conner had 50%. Of okay. the vote, the second place, the runner-up was Adam Thielen at 24. Oh, so this was J nice. James Conner really ran away with this one. Yeah, he did. I'll All be right. honest. I voted for Carry On. I didn't want him to win, but he hurt me the most as my my guy. Oh, were you into him? <laughs> I've been known to <laughs> been known to buy a stock or two in Carry On <laughs> Jones. All right, the next footy. Also, James Conner, your footy. Is oh, in the yeah. mail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't forget that. All right. The next award for poopiest pants. Oh, the nominees are Odell Beckham, James Conner again, Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, and Juju Smith Schuster. And the winner is Hold. Yep. Hold. Hold. Odell Beckham mm. Jr., you had the biggest, poopiest pants out there, even more than the runner-up, David Johnson, who had 28% of the David vote. David Johnson, I tried to stick up for him. You did enough because, I mean, look, almost what was half the, percentage the vote, 39, 39% voted for Odell Beckham as the poopiest pants. Look, scientifically, you can only fit so much poop in a pair of pants. Your pants have to be really big to have the poopiest pants. Beckham's pants are big. They're as big as they get. Beckham was out there in MC Hammer pants. Yeah. Those are loaded. Full. They were loaded. All right. The fourth category, the waiver wire wonder. Which undrafted waiver wire stud was the best signing of the 2019 season? Last year we had George Kittle. This year's nominees, Devontae Parker. Yes. DJ Chark. Yeah, I like, yeah. Ryan Tannehill and Ryan Fitzpatrick, Darren Waller, hmm. and the winner of the Waiver Wire Wonder Award for 2019. The footy goes to Devontae hmm. Parker. Yes. Well, well deserved. As it should. I mean, you're talking about once you picked him up off of the Waiver Wire, he was the wide receiver too the rest of the way. 47% of the vote, a runner-up. For Darren Waller. Yeah, it's well deserved for Darren 22%. Waller. 22%. So for Devontae, congratulations, Devontae Parker. Your footy is uh, in the mail. For the mail. Devontae Parker, I mean, that was that was quite the voyage of an entire season where you had it just it, like fleeting jokes those first couple weeks where Devontae Parker had some production. Then he had the goose egg, of course, against the New England Patriots and then started kind of just producing every single week until the point of you just couldn't ignore it anymore. And the nice thing is he did enough, often enough, to where yeah. in those playoff weeks where you're going, can I really trust Devontae Parker, players were doing it. Players were, I mean, we put him in over Amari Cooper See, in our the, playoff run. That We talk so much about what he did at the end of the year, but think about what you had to decide about Devontae Parker when you signed him. Because you're talking about an underwhelming player who's let you down year after year mixed with the most embarrassing team at the time. Yeah. So even if you have a good week from a guy like Devontae Parker, you kind of rolled your eyes into the back of your head and thought, 
uh, is he a waiver wire rental for a week? Is he, what is he for real? Ends up being a year long guy. The fantasy wide receiver of the year, factoring <laughs> draft position. Big, stop it. Stop no, it. No, I just I have no idea who's going to win. Who's going to win this? Draft position, yada yada yada. Look, the nominees are Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay, Devontae Parker, who just won an award. Yes, he did. Chris Godwin, Julian Edelman, and Michael Thomas, the winner of the fantasy wide receiver of the year. Hey, look, everybody. It's Michael Thomas. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, wow. Before, because we, we don't know these answers. I mean, we knew that answer, but yeah. we don't know them. I want to guess the percentage. Ooh, that's a Andy and I For Michael Thomas? Yeah. I'm going to guess he got 88% of the vote. I'm going okay. to go uh, 82%. You're both way too high, actually. Sixty-two okay. percent of the vote went to Michael Thomas. The runner-up, Devonte Parker, Chris Godwin. Okay, twenty-five mm. percent. Very respectable. You know, interesting. You Chris know Godwin, your runner-up award is in the mail. You're supposed to factor in draft position, and Devonte Parker's not drafted at all. So I feel are like you, there you are. You so disappointed. I feel like there are just good arguments for Godwin and Parker, even though Thomas was so great. But Thomas was just too great. Yes. So he was, like, worthy of being, I would argue, I mean, the number two pick in the entire fantasy draft, right? The, Behind Christian McCaffrey, the next guy you should have taken was Michael Thomas. The The truth is I think Chris Godwin could have competed and even won that award based on his draft capital had he been in the championship weeks and won people titles instead of being, you know, injured and, and yeah. unavailable. Pro probably, probably not. All, All right. right. And Jameis Winston could have <laughs> helped win people more titles, too. All right, the fantasy running back of the year. The nominees are, of course, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, Derek Henry, and Ezekiel Elliott. Let's go, Eckler. <laughs> awesome, Eckler. Let's see. And the winner is... Oh, oh my gosh. It's Christian McCaffrey. I wasn't really surprised, everyone. Acting. <laughs> you are the one that chose to seal the envelopes. The, for these live, envelopes are for very podcasts. difficult to open. <laughs> I love it. See, I've been pre-opening them. Oh, that's that's the coward's way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to wait till you're on the clock. When that drum roll is going, that's all the time you get. Okay. You start sweating. <laughs> yes. You start ripping. I got Christian real nervous. McCaffrey got 70% of wow, the vote. You... The runner-up, which I expected to be Derrick Henry, was actually Awesome Eckler. At 9%, congratulations. I accept a Christian, runner Christian, your footy is in the mail. All right, fantasy tight end of the year. Nominees were Travis Kelsey, Big Mark Andrews, Darren Waller, George Kittle, Austin Hooper, and Zach Ertz. And the mm. winner of the fantasy tight end of the year footy goes to... Who do you think? Goo Ooh. goo 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 uh, the tight... Yeah. Mark... Oh, Andrews. Yeah, that it it's appropriate. Mark Andrews with 35% of the vote. Runner up was actually. Now, I thought it would have been Darren Waller. It was George Kittle with 22%. All reliable George Kittle. So Only this, one bus game all year long. This was a very competitive category at tight end this year. Winning with 35% of the vote is unimpressive. Yeah. When you're Christian McCaffrey winning with 70%. Yes. Yeah. Mark Mark Andrews and Darren Waller both Practically free, late in drafts. What's but, this next category, Mike? Yeah, what? <laughs> it's the quarterback of the year okay, award, all everybody. Right, all right, I'm so well. Hold on, because the the nominees are Lamar Jackson, okay, Deshaun Watson, Jameis Winston, Dak Prescott, and then we have the the Ryan's, the Ryan twins, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Ryan Tannehill. Both <laughs> both of them have notes. No one else has a note. <laughs> with the player, but as well, he, he, they won people championships. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Go. Oh, so the winner of the I don't, come on the fantasy quarterback of the year it is Lamar Jackson. All right. All right now we got to guess the percentage. I'm guessing ninety. Well, so based on the fact that Christian McCaffrey only got seventy, I'm going to go eighty percent. You're all too low. It's 91% <laughs> yeah. for Lamar oh, Jackson. I don't know if we've ever seen a I feel a like victory. I was pretty close. Maybe Pat Mahomes last year. You Price is right rules, Andy. You dominated. You, you were great. Yeah, Lamar Jackson. All what a right. surprise. Can I get a real award? Yeah. Over yeah, here, Coming fellas? up soon. <laughs>
Breakout Player of the Year. This is a great category. This is an awesome category. A lot of uh, breakouts last year was Pat Mahomes. You have Lamar Jackson in the category, so maybe he'll take it down. But other great breakout options like Aaron Jones, Derrick Henry, Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, Devontae Parker, DJ Chark, Cortland Sutton, DJ Man. Moore, Mark Andrews, Darren Waller. A lot of breakouts. A lot of breakout opportunities. But there can only be one. Highlander rules. And the winner is indeed Lamar you Jackson. You struggling to get that thing out. I got it on time. Because and you were stalling. 46% of the vote with All this right. many people in it. Now, who do you think is the runner up? Ooh, second. Who finished second to Lamar Jackson? That is almost more interesting to me. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like who's take Lamar Jackson out? Who wins the? I'm gonna say Darren Waller. I'm gonna say Aaron Jones. It's funny. I would have said Devonte Parker, and none of us were right with 19. Oh, percent Godwin. Oh, Godwin. It is Chris yeah. Godwin. Yeah. Okay. Congrats, Lamar. We'll send your uh, pallet full of yeah, trophies seriously. in the mail very soon. <laughs> send it by freight. All right, Rookie of the Year. Which player was Fantasy Football's Rookie of the Year? This is a very competitive category as well. Josh Jacobs, A.J. Brown, Kyler Murray, Miles Sanders, Terry McLaurin, David Montgomery, D.K. Metcalf, Debo David Samuel. Montgomery. It's kind of neat to read all those names and see how many, you know, you get into draft season, you get into, like you, you've been talking, Mike, all the keeper picks and, yeah. uh, or, or draft picks that you've got in your Dynasty League. Look how many players – contributed for fantasy owners as rookies that makes for an exciting offseason the winner of the 2019 footy award for rookie of the year goes to oh my oh my oh my i've got my guess a yep. j brown wins the rookie of the year footy 40 percent who do you think was runner up with 33 percent it's gotta josh be jacobs oh i was gonna say kyler no, I think it's Jacobs. It is Josh Jacobs. Mm. Kyler Jingleheimer Schmidt had a wonderful first half of the season, but didn't really help fantasy owners down the line. Uh, Nor did Jacobs. You know, the, that's the, fair. That's a fair point. And and I think had Jacobs been there at the end, winning championships, much like God when he yeah he Jacobs would have won. But AJ Brown won people championships. The tank is a championship the machine. Tank. Well, you, you you really can't le don't lean into that nickname until next year, Jay. If oh, you yeah, want it yeah. to be eligible for some sort of award, okay. Yeah, All you, right. you got to know when to release things. Mm. That's right. So what's the next uh, award? All right. I finally get an exciting one because I don't know who has won. We have the Comeback Player of the Year, which fantasy player amazed you the most in their return to relevance. Last year, of course, Andrew Luck was the winner. This year's nominees, John Brown, Ryan Tannehill, Allen Robinson. The winner for the... Comeback player of the year. Ryan Tannehill was 77% of the vote. Not even a contest. Congratulations, Ryan Tannehill. Comeback player of the year. Yeah. Well, the award I, nobody wants to ever have the opportunity to win. That's, that's true. true. In their career. But if they... He yeah. has to win the real comeback player of the year. Yeah. Well, that, that is right? a real that, award. That would make right? sense yeah. for sure. Yeah. Playoff bound Tannehill. All right, the steal of the draft. I have another one with eligibility for Lamar Jackson. Which player was the best value? Ha ha! Awesome. Eckler, Aaron Jones, Chris Godwin, Cortland Sutton, and Mark Andrews are competing with Lamar Jackson. But did, can they win? Did they combine their powers? Steal of the draft is Lamar Jackson. I wonder well, how much he won by, though, because okay. probably a lot, there's, 50%. There's a, a large group here. You've got 50%. What do you have, Mike? I will take 51%. You win by prices right rules, but you still stunk because it is 71% yes. of the vote. Who I is, win's a win. Uh, once again, who is the uh, secondary winner here? If Lamar Jackson is not in the Ooh. runnings, the Foot Clan say the winner would have been... Mark Andrews. Incorrect. Eckler. Correct. Yes. Austin awesome Eckler. Eckler. Austin huh. Eckler. Always living in what second place. All right. All right now here we are. The uh, most important, most significant awards anyone can win on planet Earth as certified by us. Mm -hmm. The nickname of the year award. Now, we oh have special my. music for this, Brooks. Yes. Is that right? Hit it. Oh. 
Yes, the moment you have all been waiting for. So prestigious that this music is necessary. Since the dawn of 2019, many have entered. Only one remains. (laughs) With their silly names, their mispronunciation, their just absurdity. The Walrus, Mm. Lizard King, Chris Goblin, (laughs) Abercrombie. David Mopportunity, Kenny Bills, mm. Hocules, Slash, Hockstrap, <laughs> Jared Kuick, <laughs> and Awesome Eckler round out the nominees. Oh. I feel like I just went into Disneyland. I, I That's feel exactly great how right I now. feel. The winner of the prestigious, never to be replaced, nickname of the year award for 2019 is. There was never a shadow of a doubt. No, the Walrus, Darren Waller. Thank Look, goodness we didn't give Lamar Jackson a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. A, a nickname to, to win this award, most often or many times, you need to you need to deliver on the nickname. Look, if if TJ Hawkinson had been a beast mm. for the whole season, I'm sure Hockeyles would have had a much higher vote. But Darren Waller was, and he won if- with – Fifty-four percent oh, no. of the vote. Oh. So close, man! If the nickname of the year wins with fifty-five, that'd be incredible. I mean, to do you want to guess your, the, the runner-up? Well, to speak to your point first, I'm just sad that Daryl Henderson didn't do enough <laughs> because Darnell Anderson, of course, was the best nickname of no, the year. No, it's the worst. <laughs> Mike has never liked that one. No, because it's Which just, is strange I'm, for Mike because he likes everything. Yeah. So it should tell I you like something. I like a lot of things. Yeah. It's just that I think your problem is that it's just another person's name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Their nickname is a different name. All right, the runner-up was, what do you think? I'm going to say the Lizard King. Yeah, Sammy. It was. It was the Lizard King, that Sammy was- Watkins. <laughs> All right. Now he he also rode the coat waves of coat waves. Coat yeah, coat, coat tails. T- the coat waves. <laughs> nice, Jason. Oh, that was a Jason comment right there. Uh, Ride of, them uh, waves of uh, Alan Lazard. So I mean, he got. He, I think he got a slight bump. Really? Because yeah, another we, person also got to use we, that music. We weren't able to play that music enough. Just based on Sammy's performance. That's fair. That's fair. Now, we have one more illustrious, special, very, very special. Oh, like yes. special music special? Yes, give me the special music. Oh, yeah. The Fantasy Footballers Moment of the Year. Moment of the Year. From 2019. Your nominees. Take Lock. Take Lock. Mm. The Rise of... It's football it's time. It's football time. Hey, hey, hey. Jason's crushed soul. Nothing for that one, Jay. <laughs> no, that, that better not win. It's still hurting. Jason mutes himself while talking. I don't know what you're talking. Fedora Jason. Adam Gase. Apology. Impersonation. The Halloween costumes of Darren Waller, Watkins, and Goblin. Groinindex.com and the David Blau pronunciation. The David Blau pronunciation. Your winner for the biggest and best award of all time, the Fantasy Footballers Moment of the Year, Jason's Crushed Soul with 33% of the votes. Jason, your pain is pleasure for so many. I'm really uh, And we knew it from the moment it happened. Uh, I'm very conflicted because... Would you like to relive that moment? I would never like to relive that moment. Um, Well, Brooks has got it figured out for us. Let's go back in time. No. Tuesday, November 19th, the fantasy footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason. It's basically a two-man show because I'm about 50%. Jason's about 50%. (laughs) Different reasons. The outside (laughs) of my body is here. The shell that you have come to know as Jason Moore is still on the show. Jason Moore is no more? The inside is hollow. I am an M&M with no chocolate. So you're like the uh, the Easter chocolate bunnies. Oh, with the... Where, where it's, you're like, oh, that's ex- a whole bunch of chocolate. Oh, Except 
they serve a purpose. Mm. <laughs> oh my god! They can be delicious and a tasty <laughs> treat. <laughs> While I have no reason this. to be here. <laughs> Rivers is driving down the field. Rivers needs to essentially drive down the field for Jason to win. And he does. And he does. And I won. And Jason was up by half a point until one more. One more interception. I believe that is seven interceptions in the last two games. I have had all of them. <laughs> um, but it took each one to put me where I'm at right now. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for helping me relive that. Oh, man. Philip can... Rivers will forever be in fantasy lore for you. The, ba I, the bad kind. I can hear in my voice how genuinely dead inside I was. You were a destroyed person. I really did not care about you guys or the <laughs> show or job or any family I was family what family <laughs> i didn't deserve a family and all of that was because of philip rivers so i thank you philip oh You're, you get no footy i'm taking the footy for this one. Oh my gosh you know maybe that'll be a new category for next year brooks we can think about is um somehow the player that we like the least or something of that nature because they're the, the grudge the grudge player of the year or something because mm, philip yeah, rivers you've got the the reapers man of the year yeah I'm maybe sure we need be. the philip rivers award <laughs> we can name it after him i don't know how i feel about that but yeah <laughs> hey before we close out today's episode uh, thank you all for a wonderful spectacular 2019 season for supporting the show please come participate with us over on monkey knife fight you just go to beattheballers.com Come see if you can uh, beat all three of us, win some prize money. It will make each and every one of these playoff games a little more fun. You know, everybody wants something fun to do during the NFL playoffs. We kind of, uh, you know, we get to sit back and, you know, it's just different for us. There's not so many games going on. We can really enjoy these games and compete against one another. And we'll find out which, uh, you know, which of us our listeners beat the most this mm -hmm. week which will be the, the greatest position of shame. Mm -hmm. Then there'll be somebody in the middle, and then there'll be a winner that can brag. So beattheballers.com to check that out. We also want to thank Pristine Auction, a Devontae Adams signed Nike football cleat, $52 yesterday. Nice. That's pretty cool. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up at pristineauction.com. Otherwise, that is it for us. Congrats to all the Footy Award winners. They're in the mail. The footies are in the mail. Lamar, you'll have to come pick yours up directly, actually. We shipping can't afford the shipping. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.